Pat Smear is mostly known for his time with Nirvana and the Foo Fighters, but he was an idol for both Kurt and Dave Grohl growing up. This is a big deal because Kurt Cobain always wanted Nirvana to be a four-piece band, but just hadn't found the right fit until Smear came along. I was a really big fan of Nirvana, like everybody else. And I happened to be reading an interview with Kurt where he had mentioned in the interview, Nirvana was always meant to be a four-piece. It's meant to be a two-guitar man. It was never meant to be a three-piece. And I thought, oh, well, that's my end. So what made him so exceptional that he was brought in without an audition? Was it all thanks to Courtney that his career was saved? Pat was my first friend, and uh, then he was on welfare, and then I got him a job in Nirvana. Nice to meet with me. What led Dave Grohl to choose him for the Foo Fighters instead of Chris? And why did Smear eventually plead to leave? The last song we played was my last song with the band. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss today's episode. Now, let's get started. Back in August 1959 in Los Angeles, a young boy named George Rusenberg felt there was more to life than what his home offered. My parents didn't allow rock music in the house. I actually didn't even know it existed. He left home at the age of 13 to join a commune before attending University High near Santa Monica. There, he met vocalist Darby Crash, and together they formed the Germs. But fitting in wasn't their thing. Both Smear and Crash were expelled from school. After the Germs, Smear took a shot at acting and appeared in some music videos. He also played with bands like Twisted Roots and 45 Grave, but that didn't last long. During this period, Pat Smear was facing some tough times. While on welfare, he crossed paths with Courtney Love during their work on the film Break-In. It was Courtney who would later connect him with Nirvana, saving his career. I've known Pat. Pat was my first friend. Met him when you... I met him when we were punk rock extras. Oh. And uh, see, he gave me a jersey for him. And uh, then he was on welfare, and then I got him a job in Nirvana. Nice to meet with me. But did you know that Smear didn't even need to audition? Let's see how he joined the legendary Nirvana. Kurt felt he needed a second guitarist to assist during live performances. This would allow him to concentrate more on singing while playing. Thanks to his wife's recommendation, Kurt wanted Pat Smear to join Nirvana. Smear was eight years older than Kurt, and he'd already been through a long junkie drama with his former bandmate Darby Crash. He gave the impression that little could unnerve him, and his dry sense of humor lightened the band's mood. Plus, his solid playing helped Kurt Cobain feel less anxious on stage. However, on Smear's end, he initially thought the invitation was a prank by his friend Carlos Nunez. But Courtney Love had informed him just a few days before that Kurt would be reaching out, confirming the news and preparing him for the genuine offer. I heard he was in the SST, so I was living in Seattle. And uh, no, I just, you know, it was one of those moments, you know, I was like, we were, Kurt was like, I wanted a guitar player. And, he, you know, uh, we had just heard that Pat had turned down the chili peppers, even though it was on like welfare or something. And I, and I was like, oh my God, Pat. He was the only person that was ever, he was ever, Kurt was ever in a band with that he actually really liked a lot. Not that he didn't like Dave or Chris. Come September 1993, Kurt calls Smear. He explains that they just released their third album in utero and were set to tour and make promotional appearances. They were also scheduled to perform on the season premiere of SNL in just a few days. Hi. I'm Charles Barkley. I'm hosting the season premiere of Saturday Night Live with Nirvana. So they needed a second guitarist to help out and Kurt asked if Smear had any interest. This was a big deal because Kurt had always envisioned Nirvana as a four-piece band, but just hadn't found the right fit until Smear came along. Nirvana is hitting the big halls with guitarist Pat Smear helping to make the loud louder. The day before the first rehearsal, I saw my picture on MTV News saying, Nirvana has a new guitar player, Pat Smear, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, it's real. He quickly included him in official band photos and interviews, referring to him as the new member. Unfortunately, Kurt's untimely death cut that future short, leaving us to only imagine what could have been. It said that Kurt had intended for Pat to add guitar parts to You Know You're Right. 
But unfortunately, Smear didn't get the chance to put his stamp because Kurt died so prematurely. In a 2002 interview with the website Nirvana Fan Club, he said Cobain had sent him a cassette of the recording and told him he could add his part later. The band dissolved before Smear had the chance. Despite not getting a chance to contribute to Nirvana's recordings, he brought balance to the live performances, especially for songs from In Utero, which featured complex guitar work. For older tracks, Pat and Kurt would often play the same chords, but for the newer songs, Pat would take on the secondary guitar parts, elevating the band's live sound and making it more faithful to the album versions. Yet Kurt remained a lead on solos. Which brings us to our sponsor for today. For all the guitarists out there looking for an electrifying new way to play, here's something just for you. Imagine strumming alongside legends like Nirvana, feeling every beat, every riff, as if you're right there on stage with them. Well, now you can. Head over to BackingTrack.net and dive into a massive library of over 4,000 guitar backing tracks. And here's the best part. Enter our exclusive code SSROCK at checkout page, and you'll score a cool 25% off. So why wait? Grab your guitar, get your tracks, and play as if you're the newest member of the band. Pat's easygoing nature and willingness to be a team player made a huge difference during the In Utero tour. Dave Grohl has said that Pat made the last six months of Nirvana's existence more bearable. Well, Dave said this because there was significant tension between Dave and the other band members, Kurt and Chris, during Nirvana's final days. We previously covered this topic, you can find the link in description below. Years later, Pat stood with Chris and Dave to accept a Lifetime Achievement Grammy for Nirvana, which speaks volumes of his status within Nirvana and his contribution to its legacy. After Cobain passed away in 1994, Smear once again goes back to where he started. He returned to Los Angeles, intending to quit the music industry. However, to his surprise, Grohl reached out to ask if he was interested in joining the Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl and Pat Smear shared a strong connection during their time in Nirvana. But of course, the Foo Fighters didn't actually end up being as easygoing as they may have envisioned. Grohl worked hard to escape the shadow of Nirvana, which led him to take a more controlling role in Foo Fighters. He often criticized sharply and overshadowed his bandmates in the studio to achieve the best recordings. The final straw came when Grohl decided to redo most of the drum tracks for the album, the color and the shape without telling the drummer, William Goldsmith. And I met with Nate. And uh, so I said, what's going on? And Dave's redoing a couple of the tracks. And he goes, is that what he told you? And I said, yeah. And he goes, he redid them all. Feeling upset, Goldsmith left the band and Smear grew tired of the tensions. Additionally, the band had a demanding tour schedule, performing over 125 shows in 1995 alone. We played like 18,000 shows in one year. I'm exaggerating, but it felt like. <laughs> this crazy pace took a toll on Pat, who was a decade older than his bandmates and had spent nearly 20 years touring small clubs with small paychecks. It wasn't some kid who was just like, yeah, at that point it was just kind of like, you know. I'm older and I'm lazier. The same thing happened with Taylor Hawkins. He was also burnt out from the intense pace. There's more to this story, which we've discussed in a previous video. Other issues also played a role during Grohl's divorce from his first wife, Jennifer Youngblood. Pat was close friends with Jennifer and sided with her during the divorce. At this point, Smear wanted out, but Grohl made an agreement with him allowing Smear to stay for six weeks while they looked for someone new. However, Smear remembers it actually lasted about six months, covering the whole first part of the tour for the color and the shape album. Finally, Grohl reached out to Franz Stahl, an old friend from the DC hardcore band Scream and Stahl agreed to replace Smear. I was shocked. I begged him to stay in the band. He said, no, man, I just, I'm just not into it anymore. At the 1997 MTV Video Music Awards, Smear officially left the band during a memorable moment. As they finished playing Monkey Wrench on the Radio City Music Hall marquee, 
Smear told the audience that it was his last song with the band. Hello! Last song we played was my last song with the band. I would like to introduce you to Franz Stahl, who will be taking over. Hi. Thank you. Rock on, guys! Foo Fighter! In the following years, he stayed out of the spotlight while watching the Foo Fighters become one of the world's leading rock bands. In the documentary Back and Forth, Smear shared that he asked Roll if he could come back to the band a few times in the mid-20s. By then, Stahl had left, and Chris Schiffle was the lead guitarist. Chris thought he might lose his job to Smear, but Grohl told him that wouldn't happen. Instead, during an acoustic tour that led to the Skin and Bones live album, Grohl added more musicians to the lineup, creating a spot for Smear as a second rhythm guitarist. Smear stayed on as a touring guitarist and was officially made a full-time member again. If you stuck around to this part, a special thanks to you. You can let us know by answering today's episode question. If Pat Smear had never joined Nirvana, who do you think would have been the next best option? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. 